According to the dating app Hinge, 75% of their users are looking for and ready for a relationship. There's a new book. It's called How to Not Die Alone, The Surprising Science That Will Help You Find Love. And it applies concepts from behavioral science to dating. It's written by Logan Yuri. She's a behavioral scientist and the director of relationship science at Hinge. Yes, it is a science. Apparently, yeah. that's lesson number one. Uh, the book is terrific. Uh, I love it. I actually want to give a copy to a friend who I think is dating the wrong person. <laughs> you'll tell me if that's rude. If you say the name right now, you'll just address no. it. No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but the, the, I think the foundational premise is really interesting, which is that love is not just a thing, or a, a, a winning relationship is not something that just happens by luck. You have to work for it, and you show people how. Yes, exactly. So love is natural. We're born knowing how to love, but we are not born knowing how to date. Dating is a skill, and you can get better at it, and I will teach you how to do that. And so part of getting better is first realizing what kind of dater you are. You say there are three types. What <laughs> yeah, are they? I love the, the tendencies. Yeah, so I worked with clients around the world. They're all really different, but I was like, there's something they all have in common, and it was unrealistic expectations. And so I categorized them into the three types. So the first type is the romanticizer. They love love. They're waiting for the soulmate, the meet cute, and they expect love to look a certain way. If it feels like work, you're doing it wrong. That's me. That's you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Hello, my name is Gail. Go ahead. We should talk about it. The second type is the maximizer. I get a lot of clients like this. They have unrealistic expectations of their partner. They think, I like her, but could she be 5% hotter, 5% more ambitious? They're just always trying to find the next best thing. And then the third type, which I've seen a lot of during the pandemic, is the hesitator. And they have unrealistic expectations of themselves. They're just saying, I'll date when I lose 10 pounds. I'll date when I have a new job. It's always, I'm not ready to date yet. They think they have to be 100% ready before they put themselves out yeah. there. And there never is a good time, you say. But yeah. a couple of, th many yeah. things stood out to me. <laughs> I'm Number one, so I'm doing glad. everything wrong. But you, I want to tick off some things you Let's say. Let's do it. Social media leads to compare and despair. Prince Charming has morning breath, number one, doesn't exist, so look for someone named Larry. Never did that before. <laughs> yes. Sit next to rather than across from your date and look for a life partner, not a prom date. What do you mean? Yeah, so who's a prom date, right? There's someone who looks good in photos. You want to dance the night away with them. Maybe you want to have a little kiss or more at the end of the night. But you don't think, will this person pick up my kids from the dentist? And so it's fine to look for a prom date that's going to be light and fun. But when you're looking for the person you want to spend your life with, your criteria have to change. Yeah. But you say great relationships are built, not discovered. What, what does that mean? So many of the people work I with work this. with, they yeah. feel like when they meet the perfect person, it'll just feel right, right? Right? People say this thing, I know it when I see it. Yes. Well, actually, relationships are built. And so that's very empowering because then you can think, I'll meet someone great and build this great relationship with them. It's not about it feeling perfect from mm. the beginning. When it comes to fairy tales and romantic comedies, yeah. It always starts with the spark. Yeah. There was a spark between us. You say that the spark is one of the most harmful ideas to dating. Why so? Nate, I've been looking for the spark. I know. <laughs> That's why I, I said, I, know. I read this book, I'm doing everything wrong. <laughs> I mean, I love the spark too, but this is what was happening. I had this one client in particular, he would go out on dates and he would say, I met this guy, he was great, we had a really fun date, I'm never going to see him again. I would say, what are you talking about? It sounds like such a good date. He'd say, oh, I just didn't feel the spark. And that's why I say it's become such, this, such a harmful idea in dating. And there's three main myths of the spark. So the first one is that if you don't have the spark, it'll never grow. And that's just not true, right? People marry someone from work, someone from their office, yeah. someone from the building, right? The spark can grow over time. That's why you say go on second dates. Oh, yes. It doesn't seem right for the first one. Yeah. The first date, people one. are nervous. Some people just don't shine on it. Uh -huh. So I'm reminded of the old hair club for men saying, I'm not only the president, <laughs> I'm also a client. Yes. Uh, you apply your own lessons it's to your true. own love it's life, true. right? true. Yes. And how's that going? It's going great. And my husband gave me full permission to talk about it. Okay. Today. You said there was no spark with your husband. You know, I said it was a slow, a slow burn. burn. A slow burn. What does that mean? A slow burn is someone where 
they're not shiny on the first date. They're not necessarily the most charismatic or knock you off your feet, but the more time you spend with them, the more you like them. And so wouldn't you rather have someone that gets better over time? So yes. It's honestly, our culture is very extrovert heavy. It's also for introverts. Some people just take time yeah. to warm up, but they're such good partners. But you tell a great story about how you got to Scott because your first yes. guy said, could you wait out to here outside of the club so I can go in and meet people? Don't come in with me. Reminds me of the uh, yeah. time, Logan, I was holding onto the bumper of a car Lincoln Continental he was driving away. <laughs> and I'm thinking, maybe he doesn't want to be with me. Wait, that's a true story, Gil? <laughs> yes. yes. I was younger, I was younger, I was younger. He drove away, and I'm left in the parking lot with all my neighbors looking down at me. I'll never forget these that. These are hard lessons. Yes, yes, these are very hard lessons. Oh, yes, man. my story is that I was chasing after this guy, totally I, I won't the wrong do that fit. Again. Yeah. And I went to a dating coach. We focus on what matters and what doesn't. And through that, I was like, this guy from work who's been tutoring me in the coding language, <laughs> yep. he makes me feel great. He's so funny. He's so kind. His mom's a therapist. Yeah. I love everything about him. And my, then we started dating. My one recommendation as a married person is even if it's a slow burn, yeah. when you read your vows at your wedding, <laughs> it was a spark. Love at first sight. Yes. <laughs> there you go. It's really good, Logan. It's thank very good. So it's much. terrific. Logan, Yuri, thank you very much. The book Thanks is called How me. to Not Die Alone. <laughs> it will help you. It's out in paperback tomorrow and it's published by Simon & Schuster, a division of Viacom CBS.